Welcome to another advanced tutorial for the A10. This time we're going to be looking at laser mavericks. In the first part I'm going to show how we can use separate lasers to mark two separate targets and attack both in parallel. And in the second part I will show how to use laser handoff to attack a target which is completely out of sight. This is really aimed at people who are already familiar with the A-10 and preferably firing Mavericks. However, if not, you can still follow along. Though, as a minimum, you should be familiar with SOI, or Center of Interest, and SPI, Center Point of Interest. I also assume that you have HOTAS set up and know the difference between long and short presses, and I'll always mean short unless I specify otherwise. Finally, I would recommend that you map the steer point on the UFC to the whole task controls as the default A10 method for changing steer point via whole task is terrible. Okay, with that out of the way, let's make a start. So we're on board and we're approaching an air base which has two defence assets. Here they're adjacent to each other for demonstration purposes but they could equally be several miles apart. As I mentioned the first target will be laced by JTAC and the other will be laced by ourselves and we'll fire on both targets in parallel. If you use auto lays, then you could have that lays two targets, but sadly the standard JTAC can only use PRF 1688. I'll start off by contacting the JTAC, which is callsign Jaguar, so we can get him ready to lays for us. Whilst we run through that, I've already put my lightning pod in air to ground mode, set it to soy set it to black hot flare mode and located the target. Strictly speaking we don't need to mark the target here however I think it's good practice to always do so if you've had to manually locate the target with the lightning pod. So the JTAC has confirmed that he has some AAA for us to attack and we need to know roughly where the target is as we need to fire whilst in range and roughly point in the right direction but we don't actually need to get any sort of lock Sadly JTAC doesn't seem to acknowledge the laser mavericks as valid weapons in the readout it's a bug that's been unresolved for some time, but that doesn't stop it actually working. Okay, I'm going to set my laser code to 1111, and we can do that from either the CDU over here, but typically it's easier on the UFC. I'm now going to assign that as the laser code that our lightning pod uses by pressing OSB3. I'm not going to use laser spot search, but I'm going to assign that code 1111 as well. We now want to assign the 1688 code to one Maverick and the 1111 code to the other Maverick. And to do that we need to go to the DSMS page. Press Inventory and then either of our Mavericks. Then we need to select Missile. Then, like before, we enter our code from either the UFC or CDU. Then we press Code. And finally, we press Load. And now you can see that we have different codes on each Maverick. Pressing Start returns us to the default status page. With different laser codes, we cannot now select both missiles from the DSMS page. 
So we have to do that through the whole task controls. And to do that, we press Cooler Hat Forward to make the HUD soy. And then we can use DMS left and right to scroll through our weapons options. And there's both Maverick selected. Let's now bring up our Mav page and make it soy using Cooler Hat Left Long. And we're ready to start our attack run. So we'll throttle up to get as much speed as we can. Let the JTAC know that we're inbound. We're still 12 miles out and at this speed and altitude our maximum range is about 9 miles. Just advising JTAC that we're about 10 seconds away from requesting laser. I have uncaged my 1111 Maverick using TMS forward. And now I've asked JTAC to fire his laser and fired my laser using the nose wheel steering button. Now we've got a lock on the target, but let's get a little bit closer. Rifle. Uncage. Lock and rifle. Warning, Just pop autopilot on and watch the missiles fly in. So that's how we can attack two separate targets with laser mavericks in parallel. And on a practical note, this could be used where you have two separate J attacks who both need urgent support. As I alluded to though, in game the JTAC can only use 1688, but if you use the auto lay script you can easily set two, three or four targets, each with separate codes, and attack as many as you have missiles. Okay, that's still only two. Unless of course you have a wingman. Or a harrier, which can carry four. Let's now look at JTAC handoff where we attack a target that we cannot see. I've set this mission with a couple of scud launchers which our special forces have located in a valley. However, it's defended not only by an SA-11 stopping high level attacks, but also manpads and tonguskers, meaning that I'm prevented from doing low level attacks as the mountains are in the way unless I get in range of the point defences. And unless we can see the target, cannot normally hit it, as we won't be able to laser it. And if the JTAC lasers it, our Mavericks cannot see the laser, so we'll get a launch inhibit. But there is a way. So let's make a start, and we're currently just finishing off the JTAC engagement. Okay, the JTAC has sent us the information via data link and we are just going to acknowledge the message by pressing OSB 16 on the right MFD. And then we'll accept the CAS mission by pressing will call on the left MFD, which is OSB 4. From the AAP panel, we'll select map point mode and we'll put the lightning pod into air to ground mode. Now we're going to make the map soy and use the whole task slew controls to move the cursor over to the red triangle, which is the target location that the JTAC has just sent us. Once happy with the location, we'll hit TMS right to create a map point. And if we then hit China hat forward long, 
the seeker will slew to that location. We'll now contact the JTAG and let him know that we're starting our approach. And we'll select our Mavericks from the DSMS page and check that Master Arm is on. And once that's done, we'll bring up our Mav page. As we swing round onto target, I'm going to make the Lightning Pod soy. And then I'm going to slew the Seeker away from the target and point it towards the mountains which are behind the target. Clearly, you won't always have an ideally positioned mountain, but that doesn't necessarily matter, as long as you have something to laze. You can even laze short of a target, but you would have to pitch up a couple of degrees before launch and stop lazing as soon as the missile leaves the rail to ensure it doesn't fly straight into the ground. As I'm going to try and fire two missiles in a single pass, I'm going to fly relatively slowly to give each missile as much separation as possible. We're almost at launch range, so we'll ask our JTAC to start lazing, and we'll self-laze by pressing the nose wheel steering button. Stupidly, I moved my laser and broke the lock, and now I'm struggling to get another lock. Still struggling? And finally. Rifle then uncage our second maverick and let's just wait a few seconds rifle and then we're going to turn our laser off with our lasers off the missiles are now flying blind However, they are going to pick up the laser from the JTAC any moment soon. There's a change, which was subtle but definite, and that's the Maverick picking up the JTAC's laser, and why we need to turn off our laser. and two good kills. Now you may have noticed that they were fired 17 seconds apart but struck only 8 seconds apart and the faster you're flying the less the separation. So much so that in faster aircraft the first missile will sometimes hit last. So you need to bear that in mind if firing more than one missile. So that wraps up this tutorial, I hope you've learned some new tips and if so please do hit like and subscribe and feel free to leave any comments.